today with another artist with album 22. We have Angela Shimunek, Indie Rose, who has the song Not Tonight on this album project that has been an incredible experience to pull together. And I'm so glad that a fellow Canadian sister is on here. How are you today, Angela? I'm doing so good. Thank you for having me, Laura. I really appreciate the time. And yeah, I was I was really excited when Jared asked me to be a part of this album. I thought, you know, there's so much music in the world right now. And a lot of it's dark and a lot of it's, you know, influencing people in ways that I don't know if it's so positive, but to have all these like minded artists come together on one album with the same kind of mindset and just really speaking from their heart. I, I'm just really proud to be a part of it. So thank you. Awesome. So happy that you are truly. And the fact that you included not tonight, that you speak about your own journey. And I want to get into the song, but before we go into the song specifically, I'd love for you to let people actually know where you are in this beautiful world. Right now. <laughs> Yeah, I live in Souk, BC, so I'm about 30 minutes outside of Victoria. I've got the ocean right across the street here. We're right across from the Souk Basin. It's absolutely beautiful here. Um, and this is my backyard. We're just chilling in my backyard today. <laughs> absolutely beautiful. And then as far as Not Tonight goes, that were you always in in Victoria or in the on the island or... Yeah, well, I was born in Campbell River in 1984, um, lived there for about 15 months until my little brother was born, and then my dad moved us up to Gold River, so that's the last paved piece of highway on Vancouver Island heading north. It's a very, very small little logging town in the mountains, and that's where I grew up with my mom and dad and my two brothers. Wow. Yeah. What was it like to grow up in such an isolated community? Yeah, well, I mean, as a kid, it was, it was awesome, because it's so outdoorsy, my dad, you know, being a logger and being a man of the woods, you know, he was always taking us out on adventures and trail walks and mushroom picking and hunting and fishing, lots of fishing up in Nooka Sound, we used to slay salmon up there when we were kids. So that was, it was awesome. It was just such a great childhood. Um, and my mother, she's, she's a big reason why I play music. I mean, she plays seven instruments herself. She's incredible. She's recorded music. Um, she's just awesome. She's an artist. She paints. And so she, she actually homeschooled me and my brothers when we were, when we were really young. Right. So we stayed home and a big part of my curriculum was music. So piano and guitar, learning how to sing, learning how to harmonize with her. Um, so that was just a big part of my childhood. And then I did eventually go to public school and high school, but I spent my up until grade eight, I was homeschooled. And she said to me, my brothers went into public school and she said, do you want to go to public school or do you want to stay home and learn about, more about music with me? And that was a no brainer for me, right? I just thought, well, I want to stay home and do music, right? But when I did get into public school, I found that the homeschooling curriculum was so advanced. I was actually two years ahead when I got to public school. So I just ace grade eight and nine was like, I had already done all that. So I ended up getting pretty good grades in high school and graduating there. And uh, from there, I moved back to Campbell River to my little hometown where I was born, started working and, you know, wasn't too much into the music scene until I really moved to Victoria in 2007, where I met this girl. She's from Turkey. She's from Istanbul, Turkey. Her name is Ezgi Mutlu. And, uh, she is a, an incredible artist herself. She's a writer. And I remember I was, I was living with her cousin, Melanie, or Melissa, sorry, Melissa. And I was getting ready for a date one night and I could hear somebody plucking on my guitar and I'm going, that's not Mel. Like, who's out there? Who's on my guitar? And I popped my head out and it was Ezki. And she's going, hey, you know, we met. And I said, oh, I didn't know that you play guitar. I knew that Mel had a cousin, but, you know, nice to meet you and all this. And she goes, Mel says that you're really good on the guitar, you know, do you want to give me some lessons? And, and I said, yeah, I would love that. So, so we started hanging out, her and I, and I started realizing that she was an incredible writer. And so she had all these poems that she had written and I was, 
you know, I put music to a couple of them for her and we kind of started writing some songs and our friendship really grew from that, from the music. And she was the one, she got me, she said, you got to go and play in the bars. You got to go to an open mic. And I was terrified. I said, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, I had never done anything like that before. And it, it really scared me actually, just the whole thing. But um, we went in, we went into Logan's pub in Victoria on a Monday night and we got up there and my leg was just shaking. I've got my guitar and I've got all this extra vibrato in my voice, right? I'm just terrified <laughs> there's all these people. And that was right around the time that Rolling in the Deep by Adele came out and we did that song and they loved it. They went off on us, you know, they let, and that, that actually gave me a lot of confidence. Um, and I started getting addicted to it. I started getting addicted to going to these open night, um, open mic nights. And they had another one called the Hoot Nanny. So Sunday night was the Hoot Nanny where kind of everybody could just go up and play. And, you know, you were playing with different musicians from around the bar. And then Monday night was just kind of like, you know, the specific artist goes up and plays or whatever. But I mean, I met so many people through that venue and made so many friends. We would always go back to this guy, uh, Jason Stacy's house and all the musicians would come and they'd have violins out and, you know, big stand up cellos. And it would just become an extension of what we had just experienced at the bar. And we just kept it going until like two, three in the morning. <laughs> so that was, um, that was kind of the, the beginning of it. And then got into a couple bands and I started playing, you know, around town and it was awesome. Um, and then <laughs> I actually met my, my fiance at a music festival. I'm engaged now. <laughs> He's the drummer of my band. He's incredible. His name is Dylan Jackman. And we met in 2016 at a music festival up Island. And I was singing in my campsite. I was playing music and his friend Morgan goes, hey, I think I hear people, you know, there's some people singing over here. Like, let's go check it out, right? And as soon as he walked into my campsite, like he was just so cute. He's got brown curly hair and he's got a big music. He's got musical notes all like wrapped up around his arm, right? He's got a big sleeve and it's all musical notes. And I see him and I'm like, who's this guy with the musical notes on his arm? And uh, I looked at him and I said, hey, you with the curls, come sit with me. And he's like, me, you know, he comes over and we just completely hit it off. Uh, we started dating about a month later and uh, I was in a band when he met me. So he was coming to like, you know, listen in and hang out with my band. And one night, you know, this is not the greatest part of the story, but one night my drummer, the guy that I was playing with, he kind of had this episode you know he I think he was jealous or something was happening Dylan came in and anyways he kind of made a big stink and I said well I can't do this you know so I pick up my app and I'm leaving I'm going I, you know this isn't working for me so we leave and we get in the car and Dylan looks at me and goes well I guess you need a drummer now hey <laughs> and that was kind of it so we formed a band called the stragglers where we wrote a lot of music we didn't record any of it. You know, it's unfortunate because the band did split up. We had a couple members leave for their own personal reasons. Um, and I wish we could have, you know, continued on with that, but it, it is what it is, you know, in music and bands, they come, they go, and you just got to keep pushing forward and, and following your dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we're playing with this group called Lakeside Revival and they are incredible, incredible players. We have Allison Connell on the bass and Brian Baldwin on the lead guitar. Jade Camp, which is Allison's daughter, actually. She's just turned 22 and she's our backup singer. And that girl has got a set of pipes. Oh my goodness. We just did a gig uh, last weekend, which is when we got engaged. Um, at the end of our set, Dylan got down on one knee and proposed to me <laughs> in front of about 200 people. So that was pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's our plan. I mean, we're going to continue with these guys. They're really talented and they're into doing the original music. They like a lot of the songs that I've written and they want to work on them with me. And I've just been kind of waiting for some really good instrumentalists to come in and bring my vision to life. You know, the song I did on this album, Indie Rose, it's just me and my guitar, mm -hmm. which is all I really had in that moment. I didn't really have the band to support me. We, we hadn't been working on it, but come this winter, we're going to hunker down and we're going to start working on original music, which makes me really, really happy. I'm excited. Awesome. Well, I yeah. can't wait for that to hit the 
mainstream or the alternative platforms and be able to just get out an important message because you really pack your songs with power to really help people come home to themselves. And if you want to talk about the meaning behind Not Tonight, the song included in album 22, I think that background from the woman who is actually relaying the message would be very powerful for people. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, that song, um, it does, it talks about, you know, it talks about depression and it talks about anxiety. <laughs> it talks about your demons, you know, <clears throat> um, when I, I've been swimming around these same old toxic thoughts, right? The first line of the song, they keep telling me I'm something that I'm not. I'm feeling dark and shallow. There's a tingle up my spine and I can feel that tall, dark reaper close behind. I mean, I did, I went through a pretty dark time. I was, I was, you know, and it was, it wasn't anything I was doing. It was the people that I had surrounded myself with that kind of were bringing me down, you know, and almost had me forgetting my self-worth and, you know, what I stood for. And it was just, you know, I was young. I was in my twenties. I'm 36 now. I'm turning 37 this year. I've come a long way from that. Um, and even when I wrote the song, I wasn't really in that state anymore, but I wanted to talk about it, about what I had come through. And um, yeah, it's, it is a powerful song, you know, and, and people do need to remember where they came from and, and their self-worth and don't let people drag you down and, you know, make you feel like you're less than worthy because everybody is worthy of love and everybody's worthy of happiness. Like you deserve to be happy. Right. And, you know, it's good to do things for other people, but if you're sacrificing your own happiness in that process, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to have much left to give <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah. you know? So yeah, that song, um, it does, it means a lot to me. And I'm, I'm going to get these guys, Ali and Brian and Dylan, we're going to work on doing the full instrumental version of that song. Right now, it's just the acoustic stripped down version on the album, but we're going to be working on a full force. And it's going to sound a lot different. I have a feeling it's going to come out, you know, it's going to come out differently. But absolutely, yeah, that's basically what that one is, is kind of all about. Wow. Well, when that is ready, please do let us know, because I absolutely love the fact that you say how you've got a band now, you've had bands in the past, but at the time when you were remembering what it was like to be in the experience of Not Tonight, okay. you were on your own. And every hero has to go through the valley of transformation into the innermost cave within themselves where they have no ability to invite anyone beyond the edge where they say, you can do it from above, you know? <laughs> And like you literally had the experience of including that particular song on this album, why? This album about mental health, this album about believing in yourself when other people say don't, you know, uh -huh. this is the song that was included and having read the bio and now heard you describe how much it means to you, which wasn't even just in the words, but in the space between the words that were shared. So powerful. I feel like there's more for people to be able to get from this experience with you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it has been a journey, you know, and I, like I already had that song written when when Jared approached me like he had heard a couple of my other songs I guess and and he said I like you know I like your your style and your message and and he asked me to if I would want to be a part of this this album and and I just thought about that song like you guys the way you guys put forth the album I thought well this this does fit in with the vibe and with the messaging that you guys were looking for so it did work out I I've, I've had written that song probably about 3 years ago so it's just been kind of sitting in my in my back pocket, <laughs> just, you know, and I performed it live. I did perform it with my band, we, we, even with the stragglers when we were together. That was one that we were trying to get out and we did perform it once live. Um, so I've heard it with a band and I'm like, I just want to get back to that and really start working on it and bring it back to life. Oh, yeah, 
super excited for when that happens. Please definitely let us know and we'll be glad to let people know when that's available. And in terms of album 22 itself, in the collaborative experience that we put together to bring in the lighthouses of the world all over, each of us uniquely placed to be able to hold the light where we are and be able to help others know that they are not alone. It's like the yeah. dog on the map. It, yeah. What was it like to be approached by Jared to be part of an album that is a karma project without profits being the reason any of us are doing it? What's it like to be involved mm -hmm. in this experience? It was awesome, you know, and I, and I feel bad, like I, I wasn't a part of it as many of the Zoom calls because my life has been a bit crazy, but just that he reached out and he recognized, you know, kind of the type of music I'm trying to get out there and the messaging behind my music. It meant a lot to me to, to be recognized a little bit because I mean, I've got my Indie Rose page. I've got about 830 followers. It's not huge. You know, my YouTube channel's got I don't know, like 80 followers or something. I basically just started that YouTube channel um, for my friends and family, just so I could post stuff and be like, oh, this is what I'm working on, you know, and I've been looking at it. I got to go back in and I'm going to totally redo the YouTube channel and start putting up, you know, better quality videos and, and, and some of my new music that I've been working on. I've got some songs that I've written that I would like to get out there as well. Um, but it was just really flattering and, and I'm humbled to be a part of it. I mean, I listened to the track, I listened to the whole album and there's some great songs on there. There's some really talented people on that album and I'm just feel blessed to be a part of it. It's awesome. Sweet. And from this <laughs> opportunity, other opportunities will open. And so as those do, it's like, we always have to just remember that starting point, which is really what this song was about for you. And if you want mm -hmm. to touch on the mental health piece and the experience of having been at a lower place and then also having pulled yourself out of that space, mm -hmm. you have cells of memory that actually allow you to <clears throat> pull yourself out and help others in that process. Can you speak into that process for anyone that may be struggling and still kind of feeling like tonight, maybe? Yeah. You know, one thing I would say is when you're feeling like that and you're feeling like you are in a dark place, give yourself the space, like allow yourself to be depressed, allow yourself to sink into it and feel it because if you fight it and you feel guilty because like a, like a big thing that comes along with depression is fatigue and not wanting to get out of bed and not wanting to do anything and not wanting to talk to people, right? You like for myself specifically what I went through it was just this withdrawn feeling like I just I needed to process the things that had happened in my life that kind of brought me to that point to that tipping point and really sitting with it and you know forgiving myself for allowing it to happen and just giving me that you know just that space um, I think it's so important that we instead of feeling guilty because, oh, I just, another day went by and I didn't do anything with my day because I was too depressed to get out of bed or whatever, however you're feeling, you know, that's part of it. And you have to allow it to happen and, and accept it. And then just, just, in, I mean, not enjoy it. There's nothing to enjoy about depression, but just giving yourself that space and that time to process and why are you feeling this way? And, and, you know, and then surround yourself with better people, like, <laughs> you know, up the ante, get better friends, get better, you know, make some goals. And even if it's a little goal, like getting out of bed and just brushing your teeth or having a shower that day or eating something like whatever it is, however low you're feeling, you know, that's a victory. If you can just do that. And then, you know, and it does, it comes in waves. Like I would have days where, I, w I was feeling amazing, you know, I would get up and I would do all these things and, you know, and then it would hit again, like with, with depression, I'm not sure what it is, but it, it kind of comes and goes. And uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't felt that way in a while. It's been, you know, probably a good year since I've really felt like that. But I mean, I went through some stuff in, in my life. Like I've, I've been, you know, you just, you go through things, right? People, people do things and it's out of your control. Like, 
anybody, any woman, I'll say this, any woman that's ever been in like a domestic abuse kind of situation, um, I lived through that and I almost lost my life to somebody one night and it it definitely impacted me and it definitely kind of, you know, it contributed to those feelings of depression. I'm, I'm certain of it, you know, and PTSD, like the, the trauma, like living through the trauma of what happened and, and trying to get beyond that. <clears throat> so just stay strong. And if that's something that you're going through, get out, walk away. You know, like I allowed that to happen and I stayed in that situation and it was only because I thought I could stay and help that person. But some people are beyond help and some people are not there to help you. They're just there to help themselves and take out whatever anger they have on you. So, you know, nobody should have to go through that. And I just hope that people hear that message and, and get through it. Thank you for sharing that as candidly as you did, Angela. And uh, Matt Kahn actually says that the moment abuse is introduced, the contract that you and that soul may have is severed. No longer is that going to serve either party because to stay when abuse has been introduced means you're not in your power, which means you can't help somebody out of the ditch because you've just crawled right in there with them. So yeah. thank you for being brave enough to make it through that and to call your soul fragments back from those experiences, which is what I believe the experience of coming out of depression is connected to oftentimes when we actually get over the density because we reach for the light that was in us, but then we splintered and fractured off, which is my belief system, my BS. So take it, leave it, keep it, work with it, whatever fits and sits for you. And I say that because we've all got our message and we've all got our own story. And so oftentimes it's easy to, you know, look at people that are on social media that are, you know, making waves in this world. And then we think that they're better or that we're not as good or not enough and it's just like I feel Angela that you may have something really significant to say to somebody that may be you know looking at us sitting here talking about you know what you survived and you know have such a powerful song on such an amazing project or album now not even a project because it's coming <laughs> to completion so you know yeah. any, any words of insight for somebody that may be feeling you know not good enough to go for their dreams not good enough to get themselves out of that low space music is what saved my life <laughs> like 100 percent. you have got to go for your goals you got to go for your dreams like I said before, just don't let anybody squash that, you know, they're not worth it. Just spin on your heels, spin on that dime and walk the other way because man, you could just sit there in that apartment or wherever you were for the next 30, 40 years and be so miserable. But if you just left that person, that is like an anchor weighing you down into the sea. Like if you just get up and leave, we're free beings. We've got freedom of choice. We can do what we want with this life. You get one shot and just go for it. Like there should be no nothing holding you back and do what makes you happy I mean that's what lifted me up music doing my music <clears throat> makes me happy right <laughs> and I wasn't doing music in those depressed times it's like I wasn't singing songs I wasn't writing I wasn't picking up my guitar I was you know I was just succumbing and it was you know it was moments of weakness and and I guess being manipulated like some people can be very manipulative and when you're young like I was 22, um, but it, you know, all this kind of transpired between the ages of 19 and, and 25, I would say mm -hmm. for me. Um, but it's really just, you know, saying enough, like, yeah, not tonight, like I'm done and that's it. And you walk away and you make a decision and you just stick to it. You know, my friend, uh, my friend Emma posted a picture of a mountain goat this morning <laughs> And it's just going full tilt off a cliff. And it's not looking behind it in regret. It's not looking below it thinking, oh my God, I'm about to die. It's just looking straight across that canyon and it's just aiming for that rock that it's gonna hit and it's gonna land on. 
And uh, yeah, I just said to her this morning, I said, I really needed to see that like right now, like right before this interview, because I was feeling a little bit nervous or whatever for this, but um, that's it. Like be the mountain goat, you know, be the goat. <laughs> I love it. I, I so love the fact that you brought in am animal symbolism. <laughs> the animal showed up to give you exactly what you needed in that moment yeah. they always do so cool. to be able to help you just remember and also the fact that nerves the body actually interprets excitement and fear in the same way it can't yeah. it can't discern the difference so yeah. your your the, the nerves are oftentimes just a combination of the excitement and the fear of the unknown Co coalescing in that moment and until we actually do it we won't know so I'm so grateful that we had an opportunity to come together this morning <laughs> Angela and get to share your music your message with those who would really benefit from being connected to a warrior who is standing in her power who is moving into this world in a way that creates ripples and so please definitely go and check out Indie Rose, Not Tonight, which is Angela Shimanek. And Angela, if you could please offer a final word of hope or uh, just the message that comes from the heart in this moment to close us off today, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Just stay true to yourself, you know, like be real, be compassionate, be empathetic. Don't let the haters bring you down. Just live your life in love and stay focused on your goals. Be that goat, you know, just, just go for it. Do, do what makes you happy. And you truly will be. I believe that. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Please leave a message below. Let us know what this message meant to you, what it meant for you, what it is going to help you have the courage to do in your life. We would love to know. Give it a like, share it with a friend as well, and definitely check out Angela's work. We look forward to seeing you again very soon. Toodaloo. Thank you. Yeah.